Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's class. Um, so today we are going to be looking at paginating and populating and um how it works, right? We would we would really look at these two topics, right, in detail. So we we'll look at what is pagination, then how to paginate without the library, then how to paginate using Mongo's paginate v2 plugin, then uh, after that, we are also going to look at how to reference and populate data from uh, two different collections. Okay, so I'll start with what I'll start with pagination. So, what is pagination? So, can anybody try to explain before I go into it? What is pagination? What do you think is pagination? I'm listening. Like um set uh, an an amount, maybe a minimal amount of data that will be returned from the backend. Okay. That makes sense. So imagine um imagine that we have an app, right? And then that app keeps growing in data. Let's take, for example, um, let's say, uh, let's use Jumia, for example. Imagine that all their products, when once you just visit their page, right? All the products that they have on Jumia loads up at the same time. That website will take forever to load. So you, you would normally want to specify a certain, you, you want to, um divide the data that comes in right into pages or at least get the data you want right via pages or via limiting the amount of data you would need at a particular time for example you can say um that you need uh you need 10 10 records right for products or let's say 50 records for per time you query the database. So if you are querying the first time you and you get 50 um, um, products, which is, yeah, the first 50 products. If the user wants to see more products, you can decide to load the second 50 products. So that means you skip 50 products and start from the uh, 50 first, or yeah, the product at the 51 um, position, right? And then, you continue like that till you get to 100, right? That would be like your second page. Then if you want to get, if you, if the user still wants to get more products, you, you skip like 100 products and start from 101 to 150. That way, you're not actually burdening the server with trying to bring too much of data to you. And you're also not um, bothering the front end by trying to make it, load up and arrange all those data at uh, those data at the same time let me ask what's the singular form of data datum datum right yeah okay that's correct that was by the way so there's nothing like data with data and datum okay so there are different ways of paginating, right? On Mongo, using Mongo's, right? There are different ways of paginating. The first popular way of paginating is to specify an amount of documents you want to skip and also the limit you want to get at a time. So that's what I just explained. If you have, maybe if you have, a, if your database has like, let's say 100 products, and you want to get 10 products at a time. The first time the user views the product, he gets 10. So which means you have you have a limit of uh, of 10. You have a skip of uh, zero. So you're not skipping anything. You're just starting where you're supposed to start. The next time you skip 10 products and start from the 11th product, and you still get a limit of 10, and so on and so forth. 
which you can do on MongoDB. And also, you can paginate using a library, right? There is a library named Mongoose Paginate V2, right? So Mongoose Paginate V2 is a library that is going to help you to paginate easily. You just need to supply it some information and then it's going to help you paginate what you want. <laughs> okay. Now, that's for pagination, right? Okay, then let's do a little practical on pagination and then from there we would, um, would move to how to reference and populate um, a document. Okay, so love it. Your hand is raised. What's your question? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, how does the backend monitor and know um, where they are going to start the counting from? Let's say, for example, they want to send 10 um, objects every time a request is being made, and the person has already made the request the first time. So how would they know where they are going to start the, you know, the next count from? Okay, cool. So the front end will always pass the limit and the amount of documents they want to see at a time. Yeah, so it depends on how the um, the back end that de designed his API. The back end developer might want to use parameters to get those page, uh, page and uh, limit values, right, as numbers, or he might want to use query strings to get them. So depending on what he designs, that's what the front end would follow to get the data he wants. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I get now. I get now. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, so in the absence of any other question, right? I think I'll just talk a little bit about this. So let's take, for example, you make you you have products, right? Maybe you're um you own a website or let's say you own an api that is going to or that was designed to um manage a store so of course they will have products they will have cards uh, maybe not cart maybe products orders and then um, maybe users right and on the orders part of that uh that back end or that API, right? You don't want to store, you, you might not want to store the details of the product again. For example, you have um, bread and bread is 500 naira. You have um, Nutri-Milk, Nutri-Milk is like 200 naira. Those are the two things you sell. And someone ordered for those two, right? On your orders, you might not want to still store the name and the price for that uh what what the person has ordered right rather you might want to just use the product id on the order so that anytime that you view the order since the product id can be traced back to the product the product details will automatically be added to that order so you can view it okay so that's where this uh populate comes in referencing and populating a collection or yeah or a record right so we'll do that but first let's look at pagination so um let me come down here um i'll create a new folder i'll call this um, page and populate page and and page and populate you guys are making me do this again from scratch well, I'll do it. First, my duty is to make sure you understand how to use back end. Okay, you can see my VS code. Wow, okay, okay. Okay. I totally understand. So let me reshare 
yes i want to trust the author because i'm the author uh so i want you you guys to be the one to actually tell me what to do next while i'm doing what i want to do so what is the first step i'll take now anybody you Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, is it to set up a, a, a file? Or I don't yes, know what to they call it. Set up a project, yes. A project, okay. Yes. You just uh, go to your, you open your terminal. Then uh -huh. you just uh, enter M, uh, MPN init dash Y. That's if you want to, that's why. Then press enter. <laughs> okay, wait, there's something I didn't show you guys, right? Mm. Which will make your life easier as a backend developer. I know why I didn't want to show you guys that stuff, but then, okay, I know I'm not sharing my screen, so let me share it again. I know I didn't show you this, but there is a way you can um set up your whole project automatically without writing everything from scratch. So there's what is called Express Generator. Uh, I think I should just share my whole screen so you guys could see. Oh no, um. Okay, maybe I'll just do that briefly. So I'll just do that. You guys can see my entire screen, right? Can you guys see? Yes, we can. Okay, so if you open your terminal, first thing you have to do is you just say npm install, then minus g, then you say express, Python generator. So I think I already have it installed, except if it might upgrade on its own. Okay, what is it saying? Access. Okay, so permission denied. So I need to see sudo npm. Uh -huh. Of course. So yeah, what did what did what did you do there? Legacy version no longer supported. Please update to what? Okay, so uh, let's not worry about that now. I want to create the project, right? I'll just say express generator. So uh, I'll just say paginate and populate. Paginate, paginate and populate. Once, okay, so what is it saying? Express generator command not found. Okay, so let's see. And is it, I think is it, I've not written it this way. Okay. So let's find out why isn't it working this way? Express generator, page generate and populate is supposed to work. Okay. So let's read through that documentation. So anytime this is so this is supposed to be a culture, right? Anytime you find out that something is not working the way it's supposed to work, you just go through that documentation. Express generator and um, Okay, see it here. Okay, so npx install express generator. Okay, and then for earlier versions, this is how you install it. So the basic usage, right? Okay, so what I was supposed to do npx express generator you can run the application so uh 
let's see if I just wrote express, what would happen? Okay, the destination is not empty. Continue. Okay, this one is if I want to actually just start. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just say clear. Then I'll write express. Uh, then the name of the folder. Paginate and populate. R. So it has created everything we need. So what I just need to do is I need to, I'll need to open that folder, write npm install, and then, uh, I'm, I don't necessarily need to debug, so I'll just run npm start. So let's do that. I'll come here, I'll close that. I did this on my desktop. So if I go to my desktop, we should see, we should see paginate and populate. Sorry. Yeah, we should see paginate and populate here. Can you guys see that? So yeah. if I open paginate and populate with VS Code, we'll see a certain arranged folder structure for us, auto arranged for us. So I yeah, trust the authors. I should make this bigger for you guys. Okay, now look. Everything is already arranged for us, but one thing is missing. Our node modules folder is missing because it's not being uh installed to right as this is set up. So what we'll just do is we'll go to terminal, go to terminal, we'll go to we'll click on new terminal. And we're already inside this directory. So we'll just say npm install. Okay, now we have our node modules folder. If you come here, everything is already set up for you. So it's already installed cookie parser, debug, express, HTTP errors, Jade, Morgan. It's created uh, the basic package.json, right, for you. And it also created a, a script, right? A script command you can use to start your, um, your server. Now, it's saying that the script command is node then bin forward slash www and there's bin sorry there's bin here and there's forward slash www now this place is just where your server is your server is being created here so it's not it's not um it's not something too new right you see you still have um where is it you see we still have server dot listen here server dot listen here if you want to pass your query, right? Or your, sorry, your function to, to um, log out that the server has started, you can do so, right? What they just did was, instead of having this server inside app.js, right? What they did was they exported uh, app.js, uh, sorry, they, they exported uh, express app, right? And then here they are creating a server for the express app and then spinning up that server to start. So if you come here, if you unscrew to the bottom, you'll see that app is being exported. If we wanted to start our Express server here, we'll just say app.listen, app.listen, right? But instead of that, it's being uh, set up in this folder here, right? So then if you come here, you find out that everything is basically set up for you, right? HTTP, whatever, uh, a view engine is set up for you. Although you're not writing front end here, you're not you're not going to use an engine. So effectively, you can um 
comment those lines because you won't use an engine. Okay. And that's the reason why you have these views here. And also you're not going to use views, right? Because you're just focused on the back end. So we can actually delete the views folder. Okay. Then you see we have logger express.json. Remember what I told you to um make your JSON files, right? To sorry, to um work on your JSON body in case JSON is being sent uh, from the front end to the back end. This one is for URL encoded data. If your data is sent with this format, cookie parser in case there's a cookie that you've attached to your um to your request. Then here, what you see is express the static to forward slash uh, to public. Yes. So now this here, this public folder, right? Is where everything that has to do with static files is going to be. That's where it's going to be uh, saved, right? So if you upload a file, upload a video, upload a picture, it will always go here. Now, this is where we are saying that if there's a static file, when that file is trying to be saved and we are we are we are um, trying to save a static file, it should go to public. That's one. Two, we are saying that <clears throat> anytime we Anytime we are looking for, maybe for for example, if if the if the file here is um the name of the file is maybe product one dot jpg, right? Since we've declared this as public, if we go to slash I think slash static slash product one dot jpg, it should load that the picture of that product for us automatically. So this here handles that. Then of course we just have some dummy routers already set up for us. Then this is um another middleware I didn't talk about. Now this these middlewares are for this first one here you're seeing is for four four handler. So if you want to um if you want to create a default um a default page, right? Or a default response anytime a file is not found, right? You can do that here. You can say, okay, four, four, okay. Um, okay, catch and forward to the error handler. So, okay, what you're doing here is simply, if the error is four, four, right? Pass it to the handler. Just, in fact, apart from apart from four, four, right? Any error that will cause, right? If it's not a four, four, and error it will still end up at this handler here so this part is just saying create a 404 error so file not found what 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 whatever it has to do and then pass it to the next function so this next function will receive whatever this passes to it if what you're looking for the route you're using you're looking for is not found that's one now, if there's any other error that occurred, right, that is not a 404 error, right, this is the line of code, right, that will handle it. Okay, so I can decide what what is what is handling here. What is happening here is just simple. If the environment we find ourselves is the development environment, which by default, as you're using your 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 VS code on your system, right? The environment is development by default. Then what we are just simply saying here is if the environment is default is uh, development by, then what we should do is we should log out the, we should, um. okay, we should just show, where is it? Okay, we should return the error status. So if it is a, 400, we should return 400. If it's 500, we should return 500. Whatever it is, we should just return the status uh, code for that error, right? And then we should just render error. But now, this is another thing. Since we are not using, uh, we are not writing our front end here, right? We are not writing any front end here. So you will never use res.render because this would, this would look for slash view 
that's it to look for the view folder and look for an error file inside that view folder but we don't have a view folder and we are not using any views here so instead of that we'll just res dot send then we could say um we could say okay so we would rather do this we say res dot status dot send then we can say um message um so we can say the message should be res dot locals dot error so what what are we doing here we are saying of course if it is if the environment is development this error will be returned here but if the the if the if the environment is not development maybe staging or production then an empty object will be returned so we don't end up showing users the stack trace of our error so this the stack trace will contain maybe links to or the the locations of files on your server and all those stuff which you don't really want the general public to see how many times have you gone to a website and it shows an error with all the file parts. No, you don't want that to happen. Okay. So the only thing we need to now do is set up Mongoose, shall we? So we say npm install Mongoose. Oh, yeah. So now this, do you guys, do you guys like this? Like, running one command and it sets up your whole um, project, right? Rather than you trying to set it up by like from scratch by yourself, which one do you prefer? Okay, Precious, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, this one is good, but why is it using var as um, it's variable? Are you going to change it to const? Why is he using var? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, you notice this. Uh, it's not much of an issue. If you change it to const, it's not bad. I, let me change it to const. But it doesn't have any um, adverse effect, right? Or any serious effect on your server. It doesn't have any effect, but no problem. Is that all? Please, how, do, how do you manage to change all part to cons at the same time? Okay. Okay. So this is what I did. I held my shift and alternate key. And since my uh, my cursor is already here, right? My cursor is in number one uh, or the line one, right? If I hold shift and alternate and I press down but the down button, it's going to keep adding the cursor. Now, I don't want to add cursor to line six. So what I just do is for me to be able to click to add the cursor, I'll just hold down my alt key and click here, here, here. Any other place I want to add it, I can actually do the same thing. So if I press backspace, you see. It actually works for all. I hope I've answered your question. Do you understand? So, so. Yeah? You follow? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Okay. All right. No so uh, let's set up Mongoose and installing Mongoose. So someone should tell me what I should do. Uh, while Mongoose is installing, how do I set up Mongoose? What do I need to write here? I'm listening. Nobody? Okay, after installing Mongoose, you now write uh, the usual um cons uh, express equals to required uh, cons mongoose equals to required mongoose i don't know okay another thing we can do is we can we can skip 
making it a variable and just say, okay, uh, we'll say const, yeah, mongoose is equals to require mongoose. Yes. Uh -huh. Then what else do I do? Hello. What do I do? You connect it to your server. Yes, of course. I want to connect it to my server. So what do I write? Are you setting up your router? Or, or I don't know. Hmm. What? I don't understand the question. Do you want? Mom. Is it on? Uh, we should tell you how to do a uh, set set up a route. No, not set up a route. I want okay. you to tell me how to connect mongoose, MongoDB to mongoose or mongoose to MongoDB rather. Uh, cons cons connect. Uh, equals to uh. Okay. Mongoose dot connect. Mo uh -huh. uh, your URL for MongoDB. Okay, mongoose dot connect. Uh -huh. Then my URL, which is. Mm -hmm. Tell me now. Dot then. Wait now. What's the URL? Uh, is localhost. Localhost now, localhost 270172. <laughs> ah, you guys don't fall my hands. Oh, yeah, no. Localhost with the port of what? 3000, if it's all you run. Okay, no. <laughs> 270. <laughs> Mm -hmm. dot zero dot zero dot one two seven zero no two seven uh, dot zero dot zero dot one no local host is already that one to seven dot zero dot zero dot one so okay. we're saying local okay. host has okay. twenty Two seven. Uh, I mean two zero seven one zero. Am I correct? No, I'm not correct. Two seven one zero. Am I still sharing my entire screen? Yes. Yes. No shit. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sharing my entire screen. Okay. Two. That is the two seven zero one seven. Two zero. Two you say what? Zero one seven. Two seven zero. One seven. Is that correct? It's not. So let's yeah. check. Let's check. Mm. 270 Okay, see, calm down. When we connect, right, we will know if it's correct or not. So I'll just say, uh, what was the name of this talk again? You see, um, good time. test. I'll just call it test store, then I'll say dot then so then is going to run when what happens what how about catch when is catch going to run when is then going to run then will run when it's connected mm -hmm. catch catch will be for error it should not connect Okay, so it is going to be error. 
Okay. Um. So we've done that connecting two seven zero one seven. Okay. Um. What else are we missing? Is there anything we are missing? Our pot. We must set the pot. You mean the pot for our server, right? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Okay, so if we come here, we will see that our, our server is running on either the port that you specify in your process.env or it will pick 3000. Now, we did not, I don't think there is .env here. So, not sure. Let me see. Let me install .env. Again, install dot env. Now, apart from that, there's something that is missing. There's a package that is missing that we are supposed to install. Someone should tell me. Look at this and tell me there's a package that is missing that we need to install. Exactly. It is. So, uh, uh... Uh, Mr. Celestine, you were saying something. Okay, somebody mentioned something. Yes, Nodemon. Oh, so we need to save as a development dependency. So we'll say save hyphen dev. So we'll, we'll say, yeah, like that. Then we say, uh, Nodemon. Okay, so node mon is there. What we just need to change here is we'll say node mon. Then here we can, in case we want to deploy this on the internet, we can say serve, right? And you can say, now when you're deploying on the internet, you will not use node mon, right? To deploy, you just say node for slash bin slash www. Yeah, because it's not, uh, your server is not supposed to restart on production okay so 27017 is correct now um what i would like to do here is when i've when the port is set and it's listening i can come and add a function here to just tell me that it's listening so console.log um server has started on ports, ports. So that's inside the www. So I could come here now. If you are running start, you don't need to write npm run start. It's going to work. Instead of you writing npm run start, right? You can just write npm start. So let's see. Hmm, beautiful. So. Everything is connected. The, the database is connected. The server has started on port 3000. Beautiful. Now, um, let's create that. Let's test dot rest. Let's do test dot rest. Let's see what we can test. Uh, we already have two endpoints here, right? If you look very well, very closely, we have two endpoints. Where is it? We have two endpoints, which is forward slash and forward slash users. So if we just hit, uh, we are getting, because it's, it's definitely a get to HTTP localhost colon 3000. If you just send the get request there, you'll get, okay, it's saying internal server error message. Okay, it's not showing me anything here. Mm, let's see. So let's let's check this out. Why? Okay. Now this is the reason. Let's come back here. This is the reason for that.
in this index or router, we are not supposed to render. Now, let me explain why. This render is going to go and look for a folder named view and look for an index file in that folder. And it's going to try to load that index file for us. But there is no index. Uh, there's no view folder here. Remember, I deleted a folder here named views. So what we would rather do is would remove all this. We can say res.send which you guys are already familiar with. I can say welcome to the index page. The index page. Welcome to the index page. And of course, uh, if I send that request now, you see, welcome to the index page, okay? And, um, if we go to users, let me see if users also render something. Okay, so users doesn't just say respond with the resource. So I'll just say forward slash users. And of course we have respond with the resource, but that's not the point of why we, why we are here. Let's move further. We'll create a models folder. In that models folder, we'll create a um, products. I'll just, Keep, I'll just create a list of products that nobody actually owns. Anybody can add any product. Anybody can delete any products. It's I just want to show you how Mongoose populates. Uh, sorry, Mongoose um paginate works. So say const uh, Mongoose is equals to require require Mongoose. Then we would say that const um, mongoose schema is equals to new mongoose mongoose dot schema. Of course, this schema would just contain the product name. Uh, as string, uh, it should be required. The product price, maybe description. I could just as well just copy and paste this. So I'll just change this to description. Uh, price. Price, the price could be a number. Sorry, price could be a number. Of course, here I'll say that I want to include timestamps. Then, of course, I need to create the model from that. So I could say a uh, product model. So this would be mongoose.model. Then the model is going to have a name of products. Of course, this should be in plural every time. Then it's going to accept the schema, which is the schema we just created here, which is a mongoose type of schema. So I'll just copy that and paste. So what we just did is we created a schema. A schema is just a, a blueprint of how you want your data to be structured on the database, right? So before that, before that, uh, let's say the, that product is being saved, it will be checked if the product has a name, if the name is string, right? The description, if it has a description, if the description is string, right? If the price is, is also there and if the price is a number, if the price is a string, it will be, um converted to a number okay before it's being saved so that's why you have this schema then this this uh timestamps here is just saying um maintain the created at and updated at time for me i don't want to maintain it by myself so each time you update the documents the update at is going to be updated automatically 
when you create is going to be created automatically timestamp for created at is going to be created auto automatically for that document so that's what we've done the next thing we want to do is we want to module dot export um, product model product model that way then uh, maybe I should I would later create an other model. Okay. So let me let me create um endpoints to add products, right? Posts. Uh maybe I'll just add like 10 products also. So I'll say products. RQRES. Uh, this is what I like doing also. I like adding this next. And there's a reason for this. I always want my controllers to act more like um, middleware. So if an error occurs, I will just pass the error to this next. The next is going to call this part of the code. This part of this, the error, the error handler, which will automatically handle the error for me. So I don't need to actually try to handle error on my own. So I could, what I could do now is I could say, try catch. Oh, it's recommend to me. Okay. So I think then here I'll first handle any error that will cause. So I'll say next, but the next I want to handle the error, right? Uh, then you can now say here that you want to const and say that should be equals to req dot body, which is you creating the body. You want the name of the product, you want the price, you, know, you want the description, you want the price. Cool. Then you would now say await product collection or product model dot create. And uh, you just pass in this tree there. The name, since the name, the, the key and the value are still the same, I'll just pass it there and I would say const products. Uh, not const, I'll say res.send products created successfully. Then here I want to get this product. So I'll say router.get. I want to get a list of originated products. So I'll say uh, products. Now I can say forward slash page. Okay, uh, I'll say forward slash skip. Okay, limit forward slash skip. Then of course here I would have RQ RS next. Of course, I'll still wrap this in a try and catch. Now, this is important. Error handling is important on your back end. Do you know why? If your server crashes, on production, it might take like some few seconds then to restart, but it's not good to allow your server crash, especially on production. So for me, I use this method to catch whatever error is going to occur and then just send it to an error handler. So the error handler will know exactly what to do. I can decide that you should always print the error out. It should, or it should send the error to me as an email. Let me see it and then know what to do. Um, it just depends on what I want. I can make it save it on an Excel sheet somewhere and then I can go through it anytime. I can make it send it as a text message to me. Or I might just I, I might just want it to just print out the error anytime there's an error that occurred, right? So uh that's that. Um what I'll need to do now is I'll say cons products product should be equal to 
a weight. Of course, this is supposed to be an async function. Limits and skip should be equals to req dot params. So I'll say find all products. Then I'll say where this where the limit is the limit you you are sending and the skip is the skip that is coming from front end. So this params now is going to extract this part and this part of what the user is going to put in and then it's going to populate it here or it's going to populate it here as req.params and then I can use them here to do whatever I want to do. Then I'll just come here and say res.send products. Because product, product is, is the key and the value at the same time. So let's see how we can add more products. Let's say products, uh, let's post, and uh, let's give this a content type of application slash JSON to give it a, uh, of 2000 Naira, suppose that, okay, what is it saying, products? Okay, this is supposed to be products, not products. Uh, what is it saying, description is required. But so the the server doesn't crash. The start trace is not shown um here, right? So, like this is fair, right? If we send this to the to a, to the user, right? The user should be able to um use this to know exactly. Oh, okay, okay. This is what this is the issue. Maybe something is missing and all the stuff. So, did I make a spelling with its description? Uh, let's try. So let me see what is going on. So let me come back here. Um, okay, yeah, description. Uh, so there was an error in my spelling. So that was the problem. I didn't spell it well, sorry about that. And none of you actually saw it. Why? Are you guys truly looking at my screen? That's because you already said um, catch and try. Successfully. I'll say product two, product two, product two is a uh, 4,000. Yes, post, uh, that's great, that's successfully. Product three, uh, 6,000. Cent, yeah, product great, that's successfully. Product four, four, 8,000. Uh, then product five, 10,000, product six, 12,000, product 
product seven. Fourteen thousand. Uh, maybe product eight. Sixteen thousand. My products are not too expensive though. So I've done that and um I want to get products now, but I want to get them pages. Now, limit is used to tell the the um, back end how many data you want at a time. Yeah, or, or um, the length of the array to be sent to you at a time. While skip is saying, these are the number of data you should like ignore before uh, sending me, right, the uh, data. So, it, Skip is like saying you want to skip maybe a certain amount of objects, right? So let's see how it works. We have products and then we'd say you want products slash uh the limit should be see we see product one and product two right i hope you guys are seeing this we see product one we see product two now if i want to see product three and product four right i would say i want to skip two i want to skip two of So now we are we are in product where we are in product three and product four. So I want to skip product three and product four, right? So that will mean me saying uh I want to skip four products, right? Let's see. So the last product was product four. I want to see product five and product six. Okay, so I've skipped I have product five and product six now. So if I want to see products seven and products eight this would be me skipping to six so this is five six so i'll do that and we have product seven and product eight do you guys have any question so i can decide to change this i can decide that oh i want to be seeing three products per page so i'll say I want to see three products and uh, I'm not skipping anything. So start from the first one. So now we we'll have products one, products two, and products three. If I want to see products four, I would say I want to skip three products because I've seen three products already. So the last product here is product three. If I make that request, you see we have products four, product five, and product six. Uh, if I want to skip further, I would say I want to skip six products. So if we do that, we'll would have product seven and product eight. Okay, so this is quite simple, right? This is very, very simple to, to uh, do. And this is just using normal, um, the normal um, skip and limits that come. or mongoose paginate v2 so i'll kill this i'll say mongoose uh, npm install mongoose paginate v2 
Okay, so what is he saying? Oh, there's not there's nothing like install. It's install. Okay. So um that will install. That will install. Um I'm just waiting for it. Hello. Yeah. Well, I want to add so that's limit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it that we are As limiting those three? Three product. Yes. One. I will it again. Okay. So let me let me explain it to you. I said in the endpoints. Let's go to the endpoints. I said in the endpoints that after forward slash product, the first value there is the limit, while the second value is the skip. You can decide to do it anyway. You can make the first value skip while the second value limit. It's still fine. Anyone, anyhow you want to do it. But this is how I choose to do it. So now, what I'm saying is the limit, right, which is the limit is the number of products or the num yeah, yeah the number of products that should be returned per my request. While the skip is the um number of products that I want to skip over. So that's like saying, okay, if we have 10 products, let's say maybe the first product, right? The first, or uh, let's say my limit is three. And my skip is zero. It means I want to start from the first product, right? From the first page of the product. Now, if I want to maybe show the second page of the product, I'll need to say my limit is three and my skip should be three. So that I should start from the fourth product to show me as though it's going to another page. Do you now get it? Okay. Did, did, you, did yeah. you get what I just explained? yeah exactly now let's see how we can make this more dynamic right it shouldn't just show us the product it should show us some information about the the what we are trying to do so let's close all this out first we've installed mongoose paginate v2 the next thing we are going to do is we are going to come here we would say const require sorry page in it should be equals to require require mongoose page in it v2 please okay then we require this the next thing for us to do is to populate it so we'll say uh, sorry, did I say populate? Uh, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to add it as a plugin. Now, Mongo's Paginate V2 is a plugin and Mongo database allows us to add plugins to it. So plug plugins are extensions, right? They are um, extra features that you might want Mongo to do, which probably isn't written by Mongo, it might be written by anybody can create an uh, a plugin for Mongo, right? And then they can use it for different purposes. Like for example, there's another extension or there's another uh, plugin that exists that can be used for soft deletes. So soft delete is telling the user that the document has been deleted when in reality it has not been deleted, but you're just hiding it from that user. Is that what, what WhatsApp used to do to you people? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain. That's soft delete. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying do to you people as if I'm not also experiencing it. So let's see. Now for me to for me to create uh for me to add the plug into this uh schema, right? I'll just say now I'll call this mongoose schema. I'll say mongoose schema mongo schema dot log in 
Yes. And then the name of the plugin is this paginate. So I'll just say paginate here. So that is going to automatically add the paginate to me or to this to this uh, product model, right? Then now I've configured that, that I'm saying this paginate should be added as a plugin to this particular schema. So it's only going to be added to this schema. If, I, if there was another model with a schema and all this stuff, right? I'll need to also do this on that schema. Now, what next? What am I supposed to do next? I have, I have to go here and then I have to change some things I wrote here. Now, since I'm using a, a plugin to, uh, to paginate, I'll simply remove all this part of the code and I'll say mongoose.paginate. Mm, hopefully it will show up. Okay, it doesn't show up. And here, I'll pass my query, which is an empty query. I'm not, I'm not querying for anything, but in here I'll say page should be page and then limit. Sorry, page. So now instead of having limit and skip, you would have uh you, you can have limit and page. So I could say limit and instead of skip, I'll have page. So I'll say instead of skip. If I have page. So here I'll say the page should be that page and the limit should be the limit here. Okay. So Mongoose Paginate is going to add some extra context to what we are doing. So let's come back here. Let me npm start. And let me um what do I do? Seva has started on that spot. The next thing I'd have to do is I'll just come here and I'll make this query again. But now remember that we have limit and page, right? So the page now is going to be page one. While the limit, which means the number of documents I want to see on that first page is three documents. Then I'll send. Now look at something. Let me expand this part for you guys look at this beautiful look at this it has products the products has the documents which is the three documents we are finding the products the first product second product and the third product but it doesn't stop there it gives us the total documents that we added we, we added earlier we added eight documents right we said uh, the limit per documents we are getting is three, right? We can see the number, the total number of pages we have. We have three pages, three total pages, okay? Then uh, in the first page, so this is the current page we are, right? Then the, the current page is page one that we are in. Hmm. So this, I think this page counter is similar to this page, not... I think they are similar. We'll see if they change. Then this, you can use this tool to either disable or enable your previous or next button. So if you if you are doing something like paginating and you have next, you have previous button, you can use this to deactivate the next button if there is no data, right? You can use this to deactivate the next button. So as previous is false, so which means the previous button will be deactivated when once this page is loaded. Has next is true. So which means there's a next uh, page, right? You can do that. Then, uh, yeah, the next page is page two. So if you want to show the next page, which is which is page two, right? Mm -hmm. You can show it. So since previous page is null, you can say, yeah, if previous page is null, it should not show the previous page. So let's move to page two now. So if we said page two, and we send that request, you see? Now, it's showing us page, it's showing us product four, product five, product six. We see, we still see a total of eight documents. Limit is three, total pages is still three. Page is two, right? And um, the page counter, not sure of uh, how this page counter works. Okay, then we have that. 
it has previous page and it has next page. The previous page is page one, the next page is page three. So this can give you more context. This can um, help you with um, maybe showing the number. For example, I know that the total number of pages is three. So I can decide to show one, maybe on my, on my front end as a front end developer, I can show the page numbers. In case someone just wants to skip from page one to page three, right? The person can just click three and it just takes the person to page three at once. I can use these total docs to do that. I can say, look from one to three. It will just show the three page, the numbers, three number of pages, and then I can just make them clickable. Okay, then, of course, uh, your, you, you can, there are different ways to actually implement paging, paginating on the front end, but that's up to front end, guys. I'm not going to explain it in this class. Okay, so based on what I've done so far, does anybody have any question about how paginating is being implemented, how you can paginate your documents efficiently? Any question? So let me do that. Yeah, let me just go to the last. Can okay, can ask your question. You know when it's written this written as docs. Can can it be any name? No, you cannot change the docs. You have to use it like that. What if the front end doesn't want the name as docs? <laughs> oh, eh. Yeah, I don't know. The person should um change it on its own when the thing reaches end. Okay, I, I have a question. Not really a okay. question, I say just um so without using this um page in it, uh, you know, library, like we want to do it manually like we did before. So how would the front end know that this is you know the maximum amount of products that we are sending to them. And let's say they give us a start and an end number, and you know the start number does not exist and an end number does not exist. How would you take care of such a situation? I can feel it. Sorry, did you say something? Let me show you what he can do at that point. Okay. Right. Okay, so let me take it back to find and let me use how it was before. I could say dot page. Um where, where is it? Dot limit. And I'll say limit, and then I'll say dot skip, and then I'll say skip here. Now look at this. After doing this, I can decide to do something like this. Const um, product count. Product count should be equals to await product model, product model dot count count documents of course i want to count all the documents so this is going to give me an integer and it's going to give me the total number of documents i have then i can decide to do this i could say uh const total page total page would be equals to page count or oh, sorry product count product my spellings is something else. Product counts divided by, um, so this is not going to be page again. This is going to be limits. Sorry, this is going to be skip. This is going to be skip. Okay, so we are saying the product count, which is the total number of products divided by, um, So if we divide, if we divide by the skip, yeah, we divide by the skip. 
right? Because if we say limits, limits, ah, is it by the skip? I think it's by the limits, not the skip. Yes, so because limits, because we are saying this is the total number of documents I want at this in this uh, page. So if we are going to on that page, this is the total number of documents I need for that page. So we can say that the the um the total pages should be the product count, that's the total product count divided by the limit. And of course, we would round this up. So we would say, um, how do I round up? Math dot what? Hello. Math dot what is used to round up? Slow, slow. Are you guys trying to google it? Math dot what? Hello. You guys should talk now. Precious. Oh, no. Okay. Math does seal. Not math does flow. So now if you do that, you can say we can say total product should be total product should be the product count. You can say that the total page is that. You can say the skip. Right? The skip is um The skip is what? Yeah, this we can just say skip and limit. You just return the same thing back to them. Limit then. Uh we can say has has previous. Has previous should be so has previous should be true if um So if skip, if skip is greater than one, sorry, yeah, if skip if, if skip is greater than zero, then it means we have has previous. So if skip, if skip if, if skip is greater than zero, which means at least we are skipping one product. So there is a previous. So if skip is greater than zero, right? Then we have a previous. But if it's less, if it's a equal to zero right then that will be false which means we don't have a previous then we'll say has next has next would be true if the skip is if the skip is less than or equal to we'll test this out i think if it's less than or equal to the um to the total page so if the total page is 20 and we've skipped 20 so yeah okay if it's less than that so has next should be true if it's less than that if it's equals to that it means it's false so let's test out so we don't want to skip anything we get, we would see our product. Then at the bottom, we see that the total products we have is eight. The, to the total pages we have is three. Uh, the skip is zero. The limit is three. It doesn't have a previous page, but it has a next page, right? Let's go, we'll skip three. And let's see what is going to return to us. Okay, so has next is false. Okay, so has previous is true, but has, has next is false, which means there's an issue with has next, which we have to look at. So <clears throat> we have a total of three pages and we are just, we are at, um, we are at page two. So how do we also even get the page? So how do we get the page? 
So if we see on current page, current page is it's going to be uh Ah, current page could be um is it total pages. Ah, I can't remember. There's a, there's actually a calculation to get the current page. So let me think about it. If we are in if we are in a current page, right? What makes us there in that current page? Ah, I can't remember it now. So let's leave, let's just leave at the current page. But let's check this one. Has previous is okay. Has next. As far as the skip is less than the total pages. So this should be true. Let me try this again. Three, the total number of pages is three. Okay. Sorry, I think. I should have said less than or equal to here. Okay, so it has next page. And uh, if we skip six to six, if we skip to six, we see that has next page is false because that's the last page. Has next page is false. Has previous page is true. So, if you didn't want to use uh, Mongoose Paginate, right? That library and you wanted to do it manually, you have to go through writing those calculations here. You will go through doing this kind of thing. So to save you the hassle and distress, just use Mongoose Paginate. I personally don't even do this. I use Mongoose Paginate instead. So, um, is there any other question? Any question? Okay, so in the absence of any other question, I think we should move forward. We should, uh, we should look at how to, um, how to join, not really join, how to populate data on tables. So for example, we have products and we have, made, let's say, order table, right? So I'll call this order. Oh, let me edit it, I'll say order.js. And of course, in here, we want to have, um, we want to have the products. Of course, we would have the products we would have the total um total item or item count and then what we would have here is uh, the total price we would have the total price there now what we want here is that instead of writing because the product has the the description and the other other um properties, right? We don't want to re rewrite that here. So what we can simply do is we'll say that we are adding a product here, and then for the product, the type of that product is not going to be string. Rather, the type of product is going to be um mongoose dot type dot object id. So this object ID is going to, it's just simply telling uh, Mongoose or it's telling Mongo that I don't want to store the product as a plain text. Rather, that product should be an object ID and the object ID means that is associated with a particular collection, right? Now, how do we tell it the collection, right? It is, it is um, related to, now look at this. Products, right, has the name products here. Order should have a different name. So order should have order, orders here, orders. Then uh, I'll change this to order, orders model.
So we have others. Now, we have products here, right? And on the others, we want to refer to products. So after saying that this product is going to be a type of object ID, I'll then say REF, which is the reference should be, REF should be products. Now, make sure that this name you're referring to match what is written here, products. You should match it. So we have products here. Now, um, after that, we have others model. Let's create routes for others. Okay, now I could say router dot get dot post and I'll say order. Then I'll, I, I could in here say async REQ RES next. Then inside here, of course, a try and catch because I don't want things to crash anyhow. Next error. Then at this point, an order, an order should contain some details. An order should contain what I should say because an order should contain product, item count, and total price. So if we come back here, paste this in here of, what did I do? All right, so we have this. And the next thing I want to do is I'll say, await. First, I want to get the total price. Yes. In case the person say he wants five of my product one, I should be able to get the total price. So I'll first say const product should be equals to await product model dot find by ID. Oh, oh, await. I was wondering why it didn't recommend for me. Yes, find by ID and the ID is going to be the product ID. So uh, I would say product details. I like calling that product details. Then here, yeah, what I'll do is I'll say const total price should be equals to, no, not total price. It would conflict with this. So I could say total should be equals to product okay and also look there's an issue with this i won't be adding one product to the um to the order just one product so instead of that i rather want to do this I rather want to say each product, each, this should be an array of products that should be sent to me. Okay. So that would be an array of products sent to me. Then for the array of products, so each product, I'm expecting that the array of products should be an array of uh, uh, orders that have this, uh, what do they call it? That has this 
total, right? Or the, that has these properties. So now there are two ways you can do it. The front end can actually take charge of getting the total price, item count, and then the idea of the product, right? But we can also do that on our on the back end. We can say for products that we want to we want to get all the product details where the underscore ID is in uh, I so I don't know if you guys will understand what I'm trying to do. I've say products dot map and then in the map I want to say P um P dot products. Or is this too much? Should I make it very simple? I don't I don't know if you guys would understand what I'm writing here. Are you guys still there? Nobody's saying anything. Make it easy. Yes, we are. Yeah, but I'm lost. Oh, okay, you're lost. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this is what I'll do. I would assume that the front end developer has added the products, item count, and the total price for us automatically. So we just save the products. Okay. So what I'll definitely do is if that is being added there will be no need for me to do that instead what i'll just do is i'll just say const oh, sorry consts okay it makes work simple for me i'll just say await orders dot is that how i save the others model let me check that Oh, okay. So others model. Others model dot create and we'll say products. Then after this, I would say const arrest.send. Or uh, message. Order created. So, uh, why is it crashing? Are you saying products? Products model has already been declared here. Models, products. Okay, index.js, I think. That was called twice. This was called twice. This was also called twice. So everything should work well now. I hope you guys are following. If you have questions, I ask. So then let me create an endpoint to get all orders. So and say router.get orders. Then I'll say async REQ RES next. Then I can try and catch here. Of course, I'll just write this. Then 
Um, okay, then next thing I can do is I'll just say const orders should be equals to await orders model dot. Let me just use find to show you guys everything at once, but I'll show you how to populate. Now, look at this. I'm assuming that the, the products is going to contain, products is going to be an array of objects and the objects, each object should contain product, item count and total price. So let's do that. So uh, I'll create post HTTP. In fact, let me just copy all this. I don't like stress. So I'll say that, and then I'll say orders, orders forward slash, um, okay, not forward slash, just, I think, yeah, forward slash order, then the content type is going to be application slash JSON. Uh, then what else do I write here? So I'll say product, product should be an array. The array is going to contain objects and the objects each is going to contain a product which is the product ID, which I'll would, I would, I would put there. It should contain an item count and the total price. So I'll come here, I'll say item count. Total price. Okay, so looking at this, First, we need to get products. At least we need to get two products. Let me not skip anything. So let's start from, I'll need products one and products two. So uh, I'm trying to check out, for example, so I need product one, the idea of product one. I need the idea of product two. Okay, the um I the product one, right? The price of products one is two thousand, the price of products two is four thousand. So this is what I can do. I could say for products one, I just need one. So which of course the total is going to be two thousand. Product two. Maybe I need four of product two, right? And product two costs four thousand. So so that that would be uh four times four, that's sixteen. So that would be 16,000. Oh, sorry, it's 16,000. That's supposed to be, because if we check orders, right? The total price is in number. The item count should be in number two. Why did I say string, right? And then the product is the product um, ID. So I should definitely remove this and remove this. Okay, now we have, we have a simple product, right? We have, oh, sorry, a simple order with product, right? Now, let me make that request to add those products. Yeah, so another has been created. Now, let me view the order that I've created. So I'll say, hash, 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 hash. So I then say, I then say, um, I think it's orders, right? And it's supposed to be a get request. Okay, so what is it saying? Let's see. Okay, so first and foremost, I didn't do this right. I was supposed to have it that way and then say res.send orders. 
Okay, so if I send that request now, I see the two others I created, this one and this one also. But there is a problem with this. How do I know the details of the products that we created here? All I'm just seeing is the ID for the uh, for the uh, for the order, right? That or uh, yeah, the ID for that order that concerns the product. But I'm not seeing details of that product. I'm just seeing product ID here, seeing the product ID here for product. Now, what I can do is I can come back here to others and I'll say find and I can say dot populate. And then what field do I want to populate? So I can decide that I want to populate the product, that product field, because it's the product field that is returning the ID for me. Now, remember that in our orders, right, we said that we are storing the object ID and we are referencing the products, right? So what would happen is on my next query is going to go and for each of those orders, right, is going to go and check for products, right? It's going to go and check on the products collection and auto automatically fill those places, right? Or those, those places for products with the actual details for the products. So look at this. So if I come back here and make that request again, send request, wow. We see that instead of just having the product ID for that product, it's coming back as an object. So it contains the product name, the product description, the price, the created at, the updated, updated at. The same thing here, the ID, the product details, item count, um, price, and other things. Now, this is another thing you might want to do. What if you want to hide things from these products? Like for example, I don't want you to know when I created or updated that product last. I just want to show you the name, description, and price. What I can do is I can come here and say on the product that I want to remove, I want to remove the created at, and I want to also remove the updated at. So that is going to do the magic. I can also do the same thing if I want to hide some, some fields for the other model, okay? But I might not want to do that. So let me come back and make that request again. Now, if you look here, you see that the product only comes with ID name, description, and price. It doesn't come with the created at, at and updated at anymore. Okay. So what if what so now another another question is what if you just wanted it to come with the name and description? Or let's just say, okay, you wanted the products to come with name and price. You didn't want it to come with any other thing. You just want name and price, those two specific things, right? Added, then the rest should be removed. This is what you would do. You would say instead of you putting minus right before before what you want to remove you just say name price that simple so when you send that request what you see is you just see that your product comes with only name and price name or your order comes with products filled with name and price alone okay so also apart from let me just make that request again to show you something so now this is just this is for the product right what if we wanted this to just come maybe wanted each order to just come with maybe the product and item count alone right what you can do is here we'll just say find that then we can see we just want products we want products and we want item count. Then we can come and make that request now. You see that it's only this pro it's only product now and item counts that has been returned for each order. Other details are not being returned. So uh that is all for today's class. Is there any question? Who has a question to ask? Or you guys are going to watch the video again. 
definitely wash it again. But just one question. How do you make um, a parameter optional? Okay, so you mean on the models, right? Yes. Okay, so if you want to make it optional, you can either remove this required, right? You can remove the required. So if you just say type of number, but you did not put anything there, you did not say the required should be true, then it is optional. And that thing you can do is if you want your if you want your uh, data or you, yeah, each properties in your data to match, you understand? So maybe some. You, you want you don't want a situation where some others have item counts while some don't have item counts. You can just say you can put a default, right? So you can say maybe default the def, default should be maybe one here because you can't make an order and then the, the item count is zero. So you can say if the default, so what we are what we are doing here is we are saying if the default is not provided, right? That the if the item count is not provided, that the default item count should be one. <laughs> but if I remove this default now, if the item count is not provided, it won't uh, show up. It will, it, will, it will be optional, right? So that's the two ways you can actually do that. You can make it optional by removing the required of true, or you can sharp with the default so that you, you would always have a value for item count. Have I answered your question? Yes, yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So is there any other question? Anybody else has a question to ask? No, sir. Okay, so um, in the absence of any other question, I think we would... Um, end the class here by next week we are going to or yeah by tomorrow we are going to look into uh another topic that's or i think by tomorrow i might decide to build a full fleshed app that has authentication and then we would see how i my thought process towards building everything and and all the stuff so thank you for coming out or for attending today's class and uh i hope to see you in tomorrow's class thank you very much boss